Now, live from Whitney Media, 1460 WVOX, the Greenberg Report, with Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Viner. You can join in the conversation at 914-636-0110. Now, on 1460 WVOX, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Finer. Good morning, I'm Paul Finer. I'm uh, the Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor, and today we have a really interesting uh, you know, program and the good news is we're not talking about politics. We're going to be talking about Shakespeare. <laughs> and we have as our special guest, Cameron Saliani. And he is a young man, um, an Irvington native. And he came up with a really creative, um, artistic um, initiative, um, launching the River Towns um, and Westchester's first and only local theater um, uh, initiative devoted to the works of William uh, Shakespeare. Um, and Cameron, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Maybe Appreciate you it. could start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Sure, of course. Um, so I am, uh, as you said, a lifelong resident of Irvington. I grew up there um, and I spent some time in the city uh, studying at NYU. But otherwise, I've been there my whole life. Um, I fell in love with acting at an early age, I fell in love with acting in Irvington on the stages of the high school um, during my time in the IHS Drama Club. Um, it inspired me to get an acting degree at NYU. And, um, you know, I, I, I came back home like a lot of actors starting out. You want to save money. So I started I came back to my uh, hometown to sort of stay there and go to the city and audition. But while I slowly throughout the years, um, spent more and more time there, I began to become far more connected to my community uh, as an adult than just as a, a child or a teenager. And um, I started to kind of look around and think, hmm, maybe maybe Irvington is, is a place uh, professionally um, I could invest in. And, you know, our area certainly needs more culture and art and <laughs> theater. You have the Tarrytown musical, you have the Irvington, uh, you know, theaters, is, oh, but I think this area has a lot of actors and actresses. Yeah. Um, why did you pick Shakespeare? Yeah, so um, the reason, in, so Shakespeare in acting schools, a lot of the time you'll hear um, teachers say, if you can do Shakespeare, you can do anything, because Shakespeare is sort of the uh, a, a fundamental uh, study of humanity at its core, so you deal with, um, you know, ideas of love, uh, hate, ambition, rage, death, all these, all these core values and core experiences of what it is to be human. And I believe that in this moment right now is crazy. You know, you have uh, everyone, you're on either sides of a political um, uh, argument, you believe in things so strongly, people get so angry, they're confused, you now have a war, people are flustered, there's so much chaos on top of the fact that there's a pandemic, which is still happening. Um, so I looked at that and thought, wow, I'm confused, I'm getting stressed, I'm getting angry. And I started looking at the works of Shakespeare, and the point of theater always has been to give an audience a cathartic uh, experience, to have life reflected. That's the real root. If you look to like Grecian theater, it was like two people on stage yelling. It wasn't very complicated. But the audience, the whole point was that the audience would see people performing things and go, oh, that's my life. Oh, that's what... And that catharsis, this reflection, watching people, it, it's really this, like, it does this amazing thing. You go, oh, okay, it didn't solve all my problems, but to see it understood at such a fundamental level, oh, that's what that is. Oh, now when I go back to my house, when I go back to my life, I, I, I saw the things that I'm struggling with, the things that make me happy, uh, played out in front of me in, in a thoughtful, creative way, and I feel understood. I feel validated. I, I feel like other people are going through what I'm going through. Life isn't as lonely. Like I'm not as angry. And this sort of almost uh, therapeutic, or whatever you want to call it, um, experience happens where you feel far more connected to your own humanity and the humanity of the people around you. And, you know, Shakespeare's characters 
they they deal with all of that. So I thought it was the perfect um, uh, uh, text and um, to focus on. And also, all the plays are free to do. You don't have to pay rights. So it all kind of works out in the end. That's great. And uh, that's... that's yeah. uh, so uh, you have some shows during the month of March, but you're also planning other shows uh, during the spring and summer. Could you tell us a little bit about the schedule? Yeah, of course. Um, so, oh, And we have to take a break for this. Uh, we, if you could do this quick and then we'll... Oh, sure. In we'll the summer, it. we'll have Love Labors Lost um, in either July or August, um, and then we'll have a fall show as well. Um, but we're finishing up a run this weekend of Acting Shakespeare at Mercy College in Dobbs Ferry, so feel free to come by at 7 and o'clock. And how do people get in touch with you? Um, so you can go to uh, at Irv Shakespeare on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or you can go to the website, irvshakespeare.org. Go to the contacts. Give us a phone call, too. We have a, and what's the phone number? Um, I don't know. I just got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but if you go to the website, you'll uh, be able to see it. Great. And, uh, yeah. Great. So I'm Paul Feiner, and we're going to be back with Cameron Saliani, and we're talking about um, his um, theater production company about Shakespeare. Now, back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Feiner, I'm the Greenberg Town Supervisor, and um, I have a really special guest today, Comrade Saliani, who lives in Irvington. He grew up in Irvington, but he's doing something that's very unique in Westchester and unique when it comes to culture and arts and, and theater. He has his own... Um, company that is devoted uh, to focus on the works of William Shakespeare. And um, the Irvington Shakespeare Company um, has um, recently uh, produced its um, second major production, Acting Shakespeare, to a local audience. And could you maybe tell us a little bit about the history of uh, your company? Sure. So um, it, it was during the pandemic, uh, shut down all of theater, basically shut down immediately um, once it uh, the pandemic reared its ugly head. And I was sort of, st I was auditioning and kind of, you know, grinding away. Uh, but the pandemic, um, it, it, it in all of its horrors, it was also a moment for a lot of us as artists to pause and stop and get out of our day jobs and get out of these sort of, um, in sort of like, you know, it's hard. You work 12, 14 hours in a restaurant or something like that. Your mind is consumed by all of that. It's hard to kind of focus on your work. Um, and in this time, I actually had, I, I uh, found myself um, wanting to get involved with uh, volunteering for politics and the political campaign and I actually volunteered for the Mondaire Jones campaign. And I got to know him, and I was so inspired by his victory. I remember the morning he won, I was crying because I, you know, I realized first of all uh, I wanted him to win, but second of all, look at him—he invested in this community. He didn't. He could have been a lawyer or whatever in Los Angeles, New York, whatever. But he decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to stay here in Rockland, Westchester, and I'm going to invest here. And look what happened. And I thought, well, I want to do that, but I'm not a politician. I'm an actor. I love Shakespeare. I love theater. What if I do something like that the way that he did for himself? So I started looking around Irvington. I met our mayor, who happens to be a Broadway producer, um, on his uh, spare time. And then he introduced me to the theater manager, uh, Greg Allen, at Irvington Theater. And it sort of just all started to develop. And I realized, wow, wait, this is a, an opportunity here. Um, in a place I feel comfortable, safe, uh, supported, uh, a place I feel deeply connected to more than any place in the world. And um, I was able to, a year ago, I sat there with Greg Allen in the theater, uh, socially distanced, and he was like, put on a Shakespeare show this summer. And I said, all right, let's do it. And um, that was the beginning. Uh, so we've been at it about a year. And uh, yeah, we had a show in um, last summer, uh, Twelfth Night, which was sold out in Irvington. It was wonderful. Um, the community loved it. I uh, felt so supported and uh, so in, in, uh, in, I felt so uh, excited to, to keep going. And then I found this show called Acting Shakespeare on YouTube. I was searching for my next production and it was this one man show by Ian McKellen. And it was an exploration of Shakespeare's history um, and his uh, famous characters and monologues. And it gave all this this beautiful contemporary modern context to his his works and stories and it, it opened up all of these these pieces to me and I was like wow this is amazing um, I want to do this show and through 
sh luck and uh, timing, uh, I had an old director of mine um, from college uh, reach out to um, a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, and we actually got in touch with Ian McKellen, and he gave uh, me his uh, his blessing to do the show for no charge um, and to revive it in uh, Irvington, and I was blown away. Um, I sent a very nice thank you email, <laughs> and uh, I, we and we started doing the show uh, a few nights ago. Um, we closed this Sunday, but it's the first iteration. We'll, we'll continue doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, the I, I want Shakespeare to be accessible. You know, for, for yeah. people, for listeners who may not be um, aware of when Shakespeare lived, how many um, hundreds of years ago? Yeah. Um, 500 or so years ago he was born in 1564 um actually we share the same birthday uh april, oh, wow. april 23rd yeah <laughs> um so that was always a, a bit of a sign i guess um but you know and i think that's a testament to uh ian writes in the show that um that uh shakespeare uh is for all time because each generation finds something new about him you know you're dealing with ideas that we've dealt with throughout history the way that he wrote it 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 translates throughout generations like you know when when putin uh, invaded ukraine for example uh when that happened i thought oh this is richard the third this is macbeth look this is a blindly ambitious violent person that is going to take something and it's a it's messy it's not well thought out and i was like that's and that's an example of how shakespeare kind of you know 500 600 years ago he's writing about uh something that's happening right now where he's understanding the psychology of someone right now and it actually helps me understand it at a more nuanced level it helps me kind of process things i get less angry and i get more focused i i cannot i i i don't feel so helpless and lost i feel like oh this is something that's happened shakespeare wrote about people like him there are ways to you know uh defeat him or to uh to 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 approach him um, and uh, it's 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 a beautiful. You learn all these lessons, and um, you you get all more the more perspectives. So uh, yeah, he, he I don't know what he, how he did it, but yeah, half a thousand years later, we're still talking about it. It's him. really amazing that history repeats itself. Yeah, and um, and do you find that um, the endings are usually the same? Um, you know, it's so you so funny you said that because. Uh, in a weird way, they are, but it's a very, it's hopeful though. It doesn't end well for Richard III. It doesn't w end well for Macbeth. People, they understand at some point that these men are being um, guided by, uh, by, by blind ambition. You know, uh, even uh, Macbeth uh, speaks that uh, he has no desire to kill the king because he's only driven by ambition. Now, he eventually gets lost in that uh, ambition and does do that. Um, but if you only listen to that idea that I, I shouldn't do this because my, my goals here are not good. They're, they're not for people. They're, they're for my own power. And what that does, for me at least, is I realize, oh, okay, someone like a Vladimir Putin, they can be defeated because... People are, look, you saw the photo of him at the table, 50 feet away. Right. That means people are afraid of him. But that also means that people uh, see him as, okay, he has flaws, he has weakness, he's actually doing this based off of something um, that is not sustainable, that is not supported by the people. And uh, that usually ends in a very bad way if you're not afraid of that person. Right. We have to take another break. Uh, sure. This is so interesting. My guest is Cameron Celiani, who is... Um, has a company devoted to the works of William Shakespeare. And um, if you want to learn about the future, um, you might want to read about the past. And, <laughs> and, and uh, attending the plays could give you a, 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 an impression exactly. uh, as to um, what's, what's happening. We could learn from Shakespeare. Yes. And how do people um, uh, find more about your company? Yeah, sure. So um, if you go on social media, um, we are at IRV Shakespeare. 1460 WVOX. Now back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Good, good morning, uh, Westchester. I'm Paul Feiner. I'm the Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor. We have a really interesting uh, guest, Comrade Celiani. 
27. He um, has launched the Rivertown's first and only theater troupe um, devoted to the works of William Shakespeare. And during um, uh, the last segment, we talked about how Shakespeare is relevant to um, modern day um, you know, news if you're concerned about what's happening in the Ukraine um, and you would attend um, or uh, some of his shows, you may learn that history actually repeats itself. Um, Cameron is a alumni of NYU's graduate theater program. Undergraduate, that's a typo. Uh, undergraduate <laughs> uh, theater uh, company. And um, I wanted to ask you, how many um, actors or actresses are um, um, involved in your show? Yeah, yeah. sure. So um, we have, uh, we right now we have, uh, it's four of us. Um, so uh, Sage Newman, uh, Jack Salibi, and then uh, Kat Quinones, who's um, actually from Mimaranek. Uh And I'm trying to uh, get as many um, local Westchester um, folks uh, involved with the company as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's the four of us. Uh, it's called with it's a devised piece that we did. So we basically all were part of uh, producing, directing, managing the show. Um, and uh, it's it's an old sort of it's an old form of doing theater, but it's also kind of a new form. Um, but yeah, it's just the four of us. <laughs> How do you uh, find the, uh, the the acting actors? Yeah, so um, I uh, we we held auditions last year for Twelfth Night. Um, and I really um, was blown away because so, you know when, when you're casting people, you don't really know these are all people you've 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 never heard of, you know you don't know of these people you're you're bringing them into a company um, if you're blindly casting um, so you're hoping you're gonna get lucky and not get anybody that's you know um, divisive or you know brings people down or is is negative in their energy and we got so lucky in twelfth that we'd have one person like that. Um, we had everyone was um, was there was no self centeredness anything like that. It was everyone was very compassionate and team oriented. And uh, after Twelfth Night's Run, I said, "Oh goodness, um, I want to keep this group of people together. Um, I want to build something with them." Uh, so um, they are uh, there, and hopefully they continue with ISC. Um, but yeah, they're family at this point, and uh, <laughs> that's it, how we got them. But is acting. Um, the works of Shakespeare more difficult than say acting on a traditional you know theater. Yeah, the yeah. So it's interesting. Um, I, difficult is difficult is an interesting word because I wouldn't. I, I don't know if it's more difficult, but it's rigorous, right? Like physic, your physicality, your your vocal work has to be um, at a high uh, a high level. Um, and it's really engaging. It's also it's almost like being an athlete um, in a lot of ways. Uh, but what what really what I struggle the most with personally is learning the lines because I don't understand a lot of Shakespeare off the text. I have to do it's a ton of translation. It's a ton of that kind of work. You have to like go back and stuff. Like I spend most of I spend most of my time researching what this word means or what that phrase meant in Elizabethan English. But the second you kind of put it all together it becomes this really beautiful uh, and exciting thing to perform. So while the prep is rigorous, um, while it's uh, it's difficult in the sense, instead of like reading a contemporary monologue, you understand the words and the phrases, you're almost translating from a different language um, in Shakespeare. Uh, that's more of the difficultness that I find with it. But besides that, um, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's real fun. <laughs> is it hard for... Um the audience do you like the like is this the type of show that like any person you know who's not that intellectual could appreciate or is it uh are the shows geared to like a selective audience of people who are you know more intellectual who generally love shakespeare great question it is geared toward everyone from any walk of life any background any type of education none of that matters it's for everyone. Shakespeare wrote, people don't like know, but Shakespeare actually wrote for the masses. He wrote for, for um, he, if his shows were like blockbusters or things like that now, like everyone could come see them and understand them. Um, and in fact, I encourage people to come. That's another part of this mission. We want people to have a reintroduction to Shakespeare. People don't like Shakespeare. Oh, I learned it in seventh grade. It was boring. I didn't get it. Everyone said he's great. I don't understand. I'm angry about it, right? 
that is a terrible place to be, but that's a place where a lot of people are. They won't admit it too because it's, you know, oh yeah, Shakespeare's great. Get rid of all of that, all these preconceived notions. We're actors. Actors' jobs are to interpret a script and perform it. That's what a theater does. So if the works aren't accessible, that's on us to figure out. And running from that isn't going to help anyone, including us. So, yes, audiences are crucial in Shakespeare, in theater in general. They're not just spectators. They're, in, they're active um, listeners and participants. And we have to bring people in. So this show, it helps. It gives you all this modern-day context. It helps you kind of translate in your head what they're saying. And it reintroduces you to oh Romeo and Juliet oh yeah it's the two people love each other well also it's a warning about what blind love does to you imagine that you you uh you you drank poison over your like seventh grade crush or whatever they're like 12 and 15 years old like that that would think about that at like 28 38 you're like my i'm glad i didn't do that romeo and juliet is a warning right and if you start to see it and you start to hear it you start to see these characters oh friar lawrence is trying to protect romeo and juliet from you know he's like oh romeo don't worry like if it doesn't work out with juliet there's more people out there you're 15 right and when you're in seventh grade and you're really you're reading it you're like Romeo and Juliet yay but when you're 28 and you're reading it you're going oh right love is far more complicated than that and it's amazing to kind of explore um, all of these themes but at the end of the day it's not going to matter if the people in the audience don't understand it so it's on us to help with this with this um, next generation you know one of the thoughts that I had is that it would be great if schools um, you know, say seventh grade uh, classes yeah. <laughs> would would um, invite you to give the performances um, sure. first because um, that could make the whole study of Shakespeare more more relevant. Sometimes when you're reading a book and you're in seventh grade, you're saying, "Oh, this is uh, you know so difficult or it's hard." But if they if you know students saw a show first, right, and then and then. Uh, you know, read the you know, the the books. Um, they might actually appreciate the yeah. importance, or maybe even the parents should be. Yes, uh, adults. Right. Adults need this too. Right, so yeah. they could help their kids uh, pass yeah. the class. Um, oh yeah, um, that too. <laughs> so so I think this is um you know, you know this is um really you know really you know fantastic in Thank terms you. of um the shows um. Um, how much do tickets cost? Sure. So um, one of the the main um, focuses here we're we're working on always is um, is accessibility um, in every way. So the shows we are performing either free or at low cost. So if you're a Mercy College where we're doing the show, a student, staff member, you can get in for free. Um, otherwise, tickets are uh, ten dollars for uh, kids and um, adults over sixty five, um, and then fifteen bucks uh, a ticket. Um, if it's really difficult, if it's difficult to pay, just shoot me an e shoot us an email info at earthshakespeare.org. We'll, we'll figure out a way to get you in there because it's it's more important you get in than than anything. Was Shakespeare uh, did he die wealthy or, or not really? Oh. <laughs> that is a mystery, as uh, many are. But um, you know, I, it's funny because uh, acting theater, uh, it's really you know people talk about oh uh, entertainment, celebrities, things like that, money, wealth, you, that's what you think. But that's not really what theater and acting is about. It's it's really a trade like anything you know it, it's as important or um as any kind of job um so i'm sure my guess would be that he was um that he made a nice uh, living wage and um, was well revered in the community um but uh that's a really interesting question um i think that that would be cool to figure out so people can kind of reshape that too yeah or, because it's yeah. unusual you have such a passion and you have your own company yeah. but Ten dollar tickets or fifteen dollar tickets right. uh, or free tickets yeah. isn't going to make you very wealthy. No, it's not, and that's not the point. The point is, I mean, my goal in life is to just like you know find a company, and it's it, you know I'm, I'm an artist, but a, a living wage where I can live comfortably and perform. I mean, the the goal of of the arts, the goal of acting, the goal of theater, of all these things, it's it's not to become famous. It's not to become wealthy, or at least for me, it's not. Um, and in school, and I loved going to school because it was all about the work. Um, it's to share stories with people. We're professional storytellers. We're supposed to go into communities and tell people stories so they can get something from them and that they can review, uh, reflect on life and, and understand it better. And, uh, that's, that's the focus. And, uh, I hope the, uh, one day I hope the government, uh, understands that better. We don't even have an arts, uh, uh, and culture secretary in the white house. We have a long way to go to get, 
uh, the country to support the arts. Um, but if we can reshape that thing from the arts being like, oh, you're either rich or famous, or oh, you like doing fun stuff, get away from all of that. This is a trade. This is a job. This, I mean, it's not it's not a bad job. It's an amazing job. But this is like anything. And if we treat it like that, I think that we're on a way to to having theaters maybe across the country in all little towns, you know, where artists can be paid a living wage and and give back to their community year round. So, yeah, there's a lot there, there's a lot uh, there's a lot of things that people don't think about that uh, I think about a lot and a few people do. Well, I think it's really community. fantastic because you really have a passion and mm. um, you're really a great um, you're you're making Shakespeare so relevant uh, to uh, the you. times. And I think that uh, it's really fantastic, you know, what you're you know what you're doing. My sister uh, went to Juilliard, and my niece, uh, Amazing. Uh, wow. um, uh, also um, is a professional uh, classical pianist. So I'm yeah. definitely interested in the arts, and I realize what a difficult, um, um, you know, field it is. But people it like you really, yeah. uh, really are very inspiring. Thank um, you. We have to take one final break, and we'll be right back with Cameron Saliani who um, started what our area's local theater group uh, uh, devoted to the works of William Shakespeare. And the contact information? Yeah, sure. So you can find us on social media at Irv Shakespeare. Uh, and we can also visit our website at uh, irvshakespeare.org. Um, and yeah, our phone number's on there, uh, our, our address is there, um, and yeah, get in, and can get in touch with us. So irvingtontheater.com uh, acting Shakespeare tickets. Great. Now back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Good morning, I'm Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg Town Supervisor. And after uh, listening to Comrade Saliani, who's a professional actor and lifelong Irvington resident, um, I really um, am going to spend some time uh, reading about uh, reading Shakespeare. And... Um, <laughs> And and learning from this, you you know you really have a great talent of uh, of highlighting the relevancy uh, Shakespeare oh, has you. on modern day life, and you know he lived uh, over five hundred years ago. Um, you know, was it hard to uh, to have an inaugural productions, and you know how much time did you have to spend? Yeah. I am so, um, I feel so, uh, like, um, so, I feel very privileged because uh, my town just happened to be very supportive of this idea. Um, but it takes a long time. It takes a lot of work. It's so funny when you're an actor. People are like, oh, do your own thing. Do your own thing. You're like, oh, great. I'll do my own thing. But what does that mean, do your own thing? Like, do your own thing for one night, for a weekend? Doing your own thing, you need to, I, I've met the Parks and Rec people, I'd have to get local, you know, the mayor involved, I had to get the theater involved, co-pros, we have to reach out to donors, uh, organizations, companies, we have to do a campaign, like, it takes months and months and months, um, but if you can do it, it's a ton of fun. Uh, but yeah, you have to tell people what you know why Shakespeare is relevant, as you said. Um, you have to you know convince people, paint a picture, a bunch of site visits. It takes a, it's a process. I love it. I love building a company, um, but uh, you know it's it's not it's not easy stuff. Um, and uh, this is if we're if there was more support for it, um, I, it would be a lot easier for people to do what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it, it takes it takes a village uh, in every kind of way. <laughs> That is, um, you know, that is great. So could you tell us a little bit about the shows that you're planning um, to organize? Sure. So um, right now we're, we're wrapping up our first iteration of Acting Shakespeare um, this Sunday. Um, so please come uh, at uh, Mercy College um, at 7 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Um, and uh, w the next production we're going to do is this summer. We're doing a production of Love Labor's Lost, um, which is a Shakespearean show. Uh, it's it's a bit on the the lighter side. Um, it's about these uh, these uh, these three people um, who have sworn off uh, all um, you know. I mean, in the play that they're uh, these 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 men and they've sworn off women to study um, for three years, uh, and then all of a sudden they uh, the, the the queen of uh, France comes. Um, and they all fall in love with her. And we're going to adapt that in a more accessible way. We're going to play around with um, with gender roles. And uh, 
we're going to cast it from an inclusive lens. Uh, but it's a very funny, silly show. We hope people will enjoy it. And then during the fall, we'll, we'll come back with er, with acting Shakespeare again for another iteration. Um, I'm going to get back into the the quote unquote laboratory and work on it and um, keep building and 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 creating the show because I think this show is the key. Um, for for our goal to uh, really make Shakespeare accessible, and we'll hopefully perform it when the Irvington Theater opens up, um, which uh, hopefully is in the next six months or so. Uh, that would be <laughs> that would be nice. But we're putting in um, they're putting and we're arts partners with the Irvington Theater. Uh, they're putting in a new HVAC system, um, which is complicated since it's a hundred years old the theater. Um, so it's taking a while. But once it's open, hopefully soon, we hopefully be in that space as soon as possible doing acting Shakespeare. Um, once again, so that's the that's the future. For is now. it costly to uh, come up with a production? It is. So uh, we raised around thirty thousand dollars for Twelfth Night, um, but uh, yeah, you have to find venues. You have to find people that are willing and excited. You know, you're putting on art, right? So people are already there's a there's a there's a t connotation that oh the second you hear art people go oh no money for fun blah 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 all these things pop into people's heads they don't even know it happens right and then all of a sudden it's like oh yeah well that's not really going to make money it's all about making money in the end so you really have to find people that are excited and believe in theater and then the thing about arts is people don't realize they need it until they're engaging with it right because it's not like water or food you know that you need to but then you realize like oh my god like i need this kind of stuff because you know life becomes uh, it becomes a uh, very you know uh routined and uh, it sometimes can become uh, mundane or or just difficult and uh and then all of a sudden you engage with a piece of art in some way and you're like wow i needed that i needed to see that i needed to share a moment of humanity with myself um and uh it changed your life uh, I've uh, I started therapy about a year ago, and one of the big things that have changed my life is this idea of you deserve to enjoy life, not suffer through it, right? And I think uh, for me, uh, theater has been that it it's created this um, connection to the joys of life, the, the 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 love, the passions of life, instead of just the survival or the you know every day kind of put gas in the tank and and, and move on with your day. Um, so uh, yeah, I I just um, I, I I really believe in 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 this show uh, helping people uh, get to, to places like that. Um, yeah, the, the, you know that was great. If um, somebody is an aspiring um, actor or actress and they'd like to audition um, for mm -hmm. your shows, for your future shows, um, or you know, get involved in helping to produce a show, how yeah. do they do so? Yeah, just reach out to info at irvshakespeare.org. Send us, uh, just send an email saying, this is who I am and this is what I want to do. Um, Either if it could be lighting design, sound design, um, ushering, uh, performing, directing, anything. Um, reach out and uh, we'll take a look at it and uh, I'll, I'll get back to you. I also want people to um, feel, uh, I, I want this to be a blueprint, right? I used to work on a farm um, in, in Stone Barns in Terrytown, And uh, it, it, the, that's part of a movement called the small scale agriculture movement. I want the small scale theater movement where people, it's not about trying to get to a place. It's about building your own thing. Right. And, you know, seeing your own hometown, who knows, we could have an Ardsley uh, Shakespeare company or whatever, like we, you could have or what like the, the Hastings Chekhov company. It doesn't have to be Shakespeare. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I want people to feel encouraged like, oh, you know, in America, we're supposed to you can make a small business. You, you're, you, you're supposed to be able to the, the ideal is that you're, you're supposed to be able to build and, you know, make the life and your opportunities, um, which is not always uh, the, the case um, and not the not supported. Um, but uh, I encourage people to if, if they want to do this, do your own thing, go build your own companies, you know, go give your own communities uh, your uh uh, the, the arts and culture that, that you want to give them. Um, so we hope it inspires people to, to do that as well. And uh, it can be a blueprint uh, to inspire um, more pop-up co uh, arts communities throughout the, throughout the, the, the state, the country, uh, everywhere. Have, have you thought about um, um, having some shows in New York City? Sure, yeah. We'll do uh, New York City. Um, I will, we'd perform... We really perform uh, anywhere that uh, that that would be interested in having us, um, and obviously, uh, you know, 
can hire us um <laughs> and uh but but we but we really want to we really want to focus on on places that don't have access to high quality theater. You know the city's saturated with a ton of theater. It's all great. The city's amazing and it plays an incredible part. But we need to get away from this idea that to get high quality you have to go to New York City or you have to go to Chicago or something like that. We need to start getting to the place where we have theater. Uh, if you live uh, around Albany, if you live Buffalo, you know any part of the state, right? Like Rochester. Uh, these little towns, little villages, um, we theaters need to be everywhere so you can get all of those experiences and see people uh, work from your community um, in high quality ways. There's no best actor, there's no best director, there's no best anything. Um, there's amazing talent everywhere. Is, are there other companies around the country that focus on Shakespeare? Yeah, so there's a lot of regional theaters. It's um, you actually, if you look up like Shakespeare festivals, you have a ton. There's Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Um, I think there's like, you know, there's the Illinois Shakespeare Festival. Um, and there's all these, there are all these regional theaters and the Hudson uh, Valley Shakespeare Festival actually in Garrison. Um, they do amazing work. I'm so inspired by them. Um, and they have a beautiful space up there. I encourage people that live up there or around that can get there um, to, to go see them work. Um, yeah, this is a, this is a, this is something that's been going on for a while, but um, the difference that we have is that those are very well supported regional theaters. They have a lot of funding, a lot of history, things like that. But with that can also be a lot of barriers too. You know, now you have, uh, you know, the, you have um, all these uh, donors and you have this institutions that are built and institutions are wonderful, but also you need on a smaller scale, you need uh, companies that are, that are tinier, um, that are, are, you can, uh, connect with on, on a more um, grassroots level, um, so that's really what I what I would hope for the for the state, the country, uh, is to build small arts organizations, um, just like anything, you know, uh, like small coffee shops. Instead of going to, it's nice to go to a local coffee shop instead of Starbucks all the time, right? Same idea with this, but with great, theater. Great, uh, we ran out of time, and I just want to thank you, uh, Cameron Celiani is our guest. And uh, he has a local theater group devoting to the works of uh, William Shakespeare. Really interesting. Um, and I hope uh, that uh, people will enjoy uh, your shows. And I hope you have great successes in, um, in the future. Thanks for being a guest. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for your service as a town supervisor. Great. I'm Paul Fleiner, Greenberg Supervisor. <laughs>